Hey everybody, I'm Kurt Alterac with MusicMedic.com. I'm here today with Ryan Walker, also from MusicMedic.com. Today we're going to take a Mark VI saxophone, what you already know is a great instrument, and we're going to make it even greater. We're going to show you how to turn this into this. At, at the basis of it all, before any Mark VI is going to be made great, the body has to be made straight, the dents have to be taken out, and we've all seen bows of saxophones smashed in, and we've seen bows. I, I'm, I'm sure this one has it here. There's, where it's, where there's it's, certainly know, flattened some, some on dents. the bow guard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so that's that's obviously taken care of, as you can see here, rounded out. Look, looking and that looks great. And so, so getting the instrument back to shape before the instrument's going to really be made greater, it has to be made back to where it's going, back to where it was originally, and and then even a little bit tighter. Right. You almost have to go from that negative and start go to the neutral, and like you said, make it a little bit tighter. So you have to maybe go to the plus one, and then we can really go from then there. Then we can take it, it from there. Yeah, make it even greater. Great. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Sometimes we have some things to, that are that are a little unique, like the like the baritone um, pickup that's often on a Mark VI. Absolutely, yeah. Those were, were popular in, in the '70s, guys, when they got into the electronic side of things, uh, being able to plug that in. Uh, players don't use it that much anymore, uh, so a lot of times we'll actually remove those um, those elements. The old pickup um, in the neck, they have a, a hole drilled in, and there's a pickup soldered in there. We'll actually remove that and do, rather than do a patch over top, we'll actually fill that hole in um, and then uh, trim it down and make it flush and then blend it in so you couldn't even see if there was a hole there. Um, same thing with that body tube uh, that goes along the side and kind of wraps around. Um, we'll actually remove that. Um, we'll do our best to kind of color match it if we need to, do any kind of refinishing work. This is getting the this is getting the instrument to a physical condition that we can start to move it forward and get our work done. Absolutely. And it's keeping the outside and the inside of the instrument very much what it what it should be standard. Absolutely. Well, let's look at some worn out key work. Um, you know, the, the, the key work, I, I know that it, aside from making a horn great by modifying it, we have to just fix what's there. And sometimes fixing what's there means swedging it and that. And then sometimes, I know Ryan, you're actually rebuilding the whole key, right? Right, absolutely, yeah. Sometimes it can sustain damage either from, from playing or an accident or, or just, you know, sloppy craftsmanship beforehand, somebody trying to, to do, uh, to fix a problem. Um, we have to fix that. We have to, you know, a lot of times replace uh, hinge tubes, uh, like we did, you know, we replaced pearl holders, um, key feet, things like that, and then the key work obviously has to be tightened up, you know, gaps in between uh, keys and posts and pivot screws, um, old swedging marks that just, it looks, um, it's just rough looking, so, so taking care of those, swedging the keys, getting rid of any marks, um, it's it's definitely essential to the whole overhaul process. Yeah, sort of turning this old jalopy into a race car again. Absolutely. Right? Bringing Absolutely. it back. Another thing that we that we that we're doing a lot here is the side key forks. And on a on a Mark VI, the side keys have a tendency to float around. And uh, and, and by that I mean there's no contact to the body. So what what we what we're doing is we're adding contacts to the body underneath the underneath the key touch so that the so that the, the side key can hit the body and it feels like a real key. It comes down, it hits solid like your other keys, and year after year these side keys aren't gonna get out of out of alignment. And what that's gonna do is it lets the player know that the key is always in the same place, it always closes in the same place. Mm -hmm. And it just removes that barrier between the player and the horn, where the player doesn't trust the horn. Right. Yeah. Like you said, it, it, it gives it a solid feel. Everything you know, your your fingers, it has. You have a pad under there, so you have something that the pad is hitting the tone hole. So you have that that feel. With your side keys, they're just kind of floating. Uh, so putting that contact underneath gives it a nice, firm, solid feel. And then adjustment, it just stays in adjustment a lot longer. 
Another place that we find that needs an adjustment is the side key uh, forks. Not really an adjustment, but an improvement, right? I mean, the original design is, how would you explain that, Ryan? Kind of a ball and socket? Almost or, like, a, uh, like a sliding like a, ball and socket. There's a lot of movement in it's that. It's a steel pin going, yeah. or a nickel pin going into a brass hole. Yeah. And that pin wears its way into the hole, mm -hmm. and then you have another brass pin going into a nickel hole. That's right. And that one wears its way out. So you have all these areas where wear can happen. Absolutely. If you ask me, from the player's perspective, this is a real weakness because they push the button they push, here's the side key context, they push, they push the button and before the button even pushes, this much play is happening in this, mm -hmm. right? So, so they're, pushing the, they're pushing this key and all the play in the mechanism is coming out before the pad finally opens. Right. And what we want is a direct relationship between the player and the horn. They need to trust their horn. They need to know when they hit side B flat, that pad's going to open right at that side. Nice direct linking. No delay. Yeah. Right? No delay. So to get that delay out of there, what Ryan does in the shop is he takes the whole ball and socket mechanism out, right? And replaces it with side key forks. And, and you're using two different side key forks, right? Yes, they, they are slightly different. It's the same concept where you have this fork and then you have the, the pin uh, in the middle. One is just a little bit longer than the other and that's just for clearance. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, um, so that takes those basically three connections and turns it down into one. Exactly. That's exactly. great. So that's an instant fast contact between the button that the player pushes and when the pad opens up. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed our video today. If you have any questions about fixing a Mark 6, making a Mark 6 great, or anything about saxophone, please don't hesitate to contact us.